Hello, Roll Players. This is Cross. What I'd like to talk to you about today is dynamic lighting for your Roll20 campaigns. So the first thing we're going to talk about is setting up your grid so that it's a little easier to see. You pull down your drop-down menu. We're on the dynamic lighting map. And what I've done is just darkened the background and the color of the grid so that it's just a little bit easier to see. For purposes of the dynamic, dynamic lighting, sometimes it's easier to set it to a white color for certain backdrops. But for now, we're just going to leave it black. So dynamic lighting. When your game loads up, this is how things will look. We have our dwarf friend here, and we have a, a light source that we've put on the map layer. If we go to the dynamic dynamic lighting layer and go to the polygon line. I like to use a red color. It's nice and bright for walls. So we're going to go to here. We're just going to draw us a whole wall and I'm just left clicking. And when I'm done, I hit right click. Create a little passageway. But if you notice, it doesn't look any different. Hit Control L, token doesn't see any different. Remember, when you first load in, you need to enable your dynamic lighting. And in some cases, you need to turn off Fog of War. So we are going to enforce line of sight, and we are going to restrict movement. If your players do not have very good machines, you will sometimes need to enable only, un only update on drop and it will improve the performance. Global illumination means that you can retain dynamic lighting, but it will provide light throughout the entire map. So the only thing it will affect is what walls you have down. We're going to leave that turned off for right now. Now we are starting to see a change. So if we go to the objects and we click on our dwarf friend, control L shows us what he can see. Now, you notice that he has a radius around him right now. And that is because dwarfs have dark vision. So when you're setting up your tokens, you need to make sure you come and double-click your token, go to the Advanced tab, and check Has Sight. If this is not checked, your token cannot see. So we're going to recheck this, and dark vision out to 60 feet and it's dim light all the way. So I just put in any, any negative number will do here. I put in negative five. So this enables our dwarf to behave as he would in game. Now, if you notice this little tunnel, it, uh, it's not very straight, which if for a cavern, it looks pretty good. But if it was city walls, for instance, it wouldn't. So what we need to do is go back to the dy dynamic lighting layer and we are going to delete our walls that we made. And if we want straight walls very easily, you can hold down the shift E and click. And if you, if you notice, even though I'm not right here on the center, if I'm holding down shift and I click, it will begin the line at the closest intersection between the grid. Therefore, I don't have to be as exact my clicking as I would normally be, have to be. So we can create much straighter lines. Now, What I do is I tend to switch to another color for something that represents doors. Now, if we were, to, let's say, have a 10-foot gap between a couple of buildings, we were going to have a door. And what I did there was click, left-click, left-click, and then I right-clicked to create that so that it was just a solid line. And now I'm back at the objects and token layer. We're going to revisit our dwarf friend. 
you can see this is what he would see. It's very hard to see that that's a door. Your map will either indicate that or if you're just drawing on the grid normally, another thing you can do is go to the map layer and just tell your friends that if they see a square like that, it indicates that there is a door. So now I go what I can see. I would be able to see as I'm roaming around that there is that white square and I know that there's a door there. I can investigate that door, I can open that door, and all the DM has to do is go back to the dynamic lighting. They can highlight their door and you can either move it into a place like this and leave it or and move it back if you want. Or you can delete it altogether. And if they close the door, just go back to dynamic lighting, shift click, shift click. It will, and then right click and it will close the door back. The other thing that I need to show you is how to generate a circle. So it, and the same thing works for the poly, for the draw shape tool. If you hold down shift, it will snap to the grid as opposed to being freeform like this. This will just snap to the grid. However, if you hold down the Alt key, it will generate a circle. And if you hold down Alt with Shift, it will generate a circle in the grid. So let's close this off and let's see what happens here. I go back to the object and token layer. And I bring our dwarf friend over here. And if you look, our circle, it doesn't look like a circle. That is because, as far as I have read, the dynamic lighting interprets a circle as a series of dots instead of an actual circle. So in this case, it would be better if you use the polygon line tool and just created a crude circle yourself. Control L, you can see it works a little bit better. Works a little bit better. Now, when creating things like that, I will start off on the grid as close as I can. I will hold down shift and I will click and I'll start right there. And then you can freely do whatever you want. And then I tend to hold down shift and left click when I'm ready to close that off. It creates a nice thing for you to look at. So what does this mean in practice? Well, here's a map I've created. Did a little testing earlier. That. Now, remember you have to enable your dynamic lighting. Now, if you duplicate this page and go to it, your dynamic lighting settings will transfer over. So the best thing to do is to create a page that already has it set up the way that you want it with the grid color and the grid background and the dynamic lighting settings and use that as a template to duplicate into creating your further, your other pages. So we're going to look back over here. And this is a 
real example of what a DM might encounter, a cave that doesn't quite match up with the grid. So what we're going to do is going to go, and I use the red again for walls. And I find the closest place next to the grid. There are several points here that I could use. I'm going to use this one. And I just shift left click to point it right on the grid. And now I'm just drawing freehand. Try to keep your dynamic lighting a little bit away from your wall so that as the players are exploring, you're not cutting off this texture that creates that immersion. It, it allows the players to sort of see what the wall might look like. So I just stay away from it just a little bit. When I get to here, I will shift left click and it will close that off and complete this line. We go back to object, layer, and check with our dwarf friend. You'll see this is what you see. You see it doesn't update until I drop it down if I uncheck that. As I glide my guy around, you can see that it would show me the changes. So let's head over. Now, how, how would you create a torch? So we're going to go into the map layer. This is where this, this exists. It's just a token. And you would go to the advanced tab. A torch. It burns for an hour. And it has a bright light and a 20 foot radius and a dim light for an additional 20 feet. So the way that it works in roll 20 is that means it has 40 feet of light and the dim light starts after 20 feet. So that's how you program this in. 40 feet of light, the dim light start, the start of dim is at 20 feet. Hit OK. 20 feet of light. And then it's dim for an additional. Twenty feet. Excellent. How does this affect our dwarf friend? It doesn't because he can't see it. Bill comes over here. It's he still can't see it. See it here. What happened? Go back and investigate. You need to make sure that your all player sees light checkbox is clicked. Anytime you have to troubleshoot dynamic lighting, it's generally because either this box or the has sight box is not checked. The torch doesn't need to see, so it doesn't have sight. However, if we go to the dwarf, the dwarf does need to see. And notice that his all player sees light is not checked. That's because his dark vision is personal to him. So if we combine, now he can see the light. So as he comes around the side, he may notice, the player may notice that, oh, there's a light there. Maybe I need to peek around this corner and see what's going on. Likewise, if players are carrying torches, and they are coming around a the corner, their light if this was a player carrying a torch and this was an enemy, the enemy would be able to see their light as they approach, giving them an edge. You can sometimes allow your enemies to prepare an attack as the person comes around the corner, giving them a surprise round. In combat so players need to be very careful about when their lights are on when they're off so that they can see if this was a human he had no dark vision but he has sight 
This is what a human would see. Only the light provided by other sources. Notice he can't see any of this behind him that the dwarf wouldn't normally be able to see. So if we duplicate, I can show you the difference between what a dwarf would see and human would see. This is the dwarf. This is the human. So it really makes those choices stand out a little bit more. I hope I've covered everything on dynamic lighting and explained all the techniques I have acquired. I'm going to show you this map. This is a map that I used in a campaign using uh, Gabriel Gabriel's save versus cave set. And it's found on the Roll20 Marketplace. If you look in the dynamic lighting, you see I created all these to block the line of sight for the players so they can go through. But once I got to this section, I was able to shift click the different points, to create these very straight, rigid lines. Whereas the cave was more of that freeform technique that I showed you. And what I do is I keep this map stored in my vault as a blank slate and transmogrify it over to my active campaign as I need it. And it will come with the dynamic lighting already set up. And so all I have to do is drop the creatures in that's appropriate to my campaign as it is right now. So... I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I will try to answer the best that I can.